Hi, I'm Callum Finlay. I'm playing Henry Walter Bates, and welcome to the set of Amazon Adventure. In the rainforest, things are not always what they seem. A young man with a passion for nature sets out to unravel a great scientific mystery. We chose to make a film about Henry Bates really to inspire people and especially young people. I mean, in these museum cinema environments like at the Ontario Science Centre and others around the world, uh, the audience is about 40% young people, uh, whether it's school groups or, fa or, or, or families. And we really wanted to inspire them about how amazing science is and how you know anyone can overcome obstacles, uh, whether they be socioeconomic or otherwise, to make scientific discoveries and advance science. Henry Bates was a, you know, a, a, an unknown guy from a low-income family. He was apprenticed in a stocking factory at 13, pulled out of school. You know, he had a lot of obstacles against him, and yet he was passionate. And it's really follow your passion. We want people to be inspired to follow their passion. It took a long time to make this film. It was uh, because it's based on a true story. Of course, we had to have uh, great research that went on for three years and uh, writing um, with my partner, Carl Knudsen, and also with um, the top evolutionary biologists in the world. My role on this movie, Amazon Adventure, was as a scientific advisor, so I gave uh, advice on interpreting a lot of the uh, the scientific content of the film. Most of the advice I gave on this film was related to the biology of the insects. So I advised on everything from uh, the beetles Young Bates was talking about as a boy to the butterflies he was studying in the Amazon. So I think it was important and useful for them to have my input uh, when they were writing the parts of the script that had to do with uh, the insect biology, because that's my specialty. Mimicry, which we show in the film, the fascinating world of mimicry, is very rare, it's hard to find. So we worked with uh, over 125 scientists to help us pinpoint in the vast Amazon where we could get some of these uh, mimicking behaviors in the animals. And then of course, it's set, you know, 160 years ago, so we, when we filmed, it's largely filmed in the Amazon, but when we filmed in London, we again worked with the Natural History Museum in London to make sure everything was authentic. We used Bates's, Henry Bates's real butterflies that were held in the museum 160 years and brought to set. We used, uh, we shot at Down House, Darwin's uh, house, and um, so it took a lot of research, a lot of writing, over a hundred drafts of the script, uh, a lot of vetting and approving, but we think it was very well worth it based on the reaction we're getting from audiences and, uh, you know, especially uh, youth. It's, uh, it's inspiring them because Henry Bates was a nobody who became um, a somebody just by perseverance and a curious mind and wanting to be like a scientific detective. You have provided such beautiful proof. It's very challenging uh, in a 45-minute film to decide when, you're, when you have ambitions to tell a natural history story, a scientific discovery story, a great one, and also a human story of this incredible guy named Henry Bates. How do you tell it in this amount of time? So we, we sort of roughly half of it is for the human story, half of it uh, the human adventure story, half of it is for the science and um, the scientific discovery, you know, roughly. And then, and then we look at what we're going to film, how we're going to film it, what is it going to cost to film in these remarkable places uh, that Henry Bates went over 11 years in the Amazon. So we had so much to choose from. And um, sometimes people felt that they wanted this thing in, the scientist or the producer uh, and uh, the investors. And then other times, um, you know, they would lose out on what they wanted and sometimes the writers would win. And it was all about balance. How do you tell a story that will both inform and inspire, educate and entertain? So I think we mixed it up quite well. And I hope uh, so far, um, I mean, we just won a lot of prizes uh, in the IMAX and uh, giant screen industry. And so 
based on the responses of audiences uh, around the world, I'd say that, that, that we did it, but it was extremely challenging and that's why it took so much time to, to research, write, and then to, to film and um, post-produce it. Okay, so it's important on films like this to have professional scientific advisors to make sure they have all of the details correct. So when they were writing the script, they came to me to ask for feedback on uh, the accuracy of the, the stories they were telling. You have to make sure you have all your species names correct. You have to make sure you have the right species in the right places. Uh, so it's important to have experts advising on films like this to make sure all the facts are just right. The discoveries of Henry Bates are very important and they're important today. The um, understanding of natural selection and how species change, and the, which now today is very much the study of genetics in evolutionary biology. But, but if you don't understand that fundamental thing, uh, process, then you're not going to understand how a lot of things work. And therefore, that was our main challenge, to get um, fresh minds and maybe other minds to understand this process because I really believe that it's counterintuitive. A lot of people think that the animals will themselves to change, but it's really uh, the, the predators uh, that are doing that and they are choosing the ones that um, not to, to devour or eat, the ones that are best suited to, to survive as it turns out. So this is, this is difficult to understand, and, uh, but it's fundamental to the future, it's fundamental to ecology, it's fundamental to understanding ecosystems and understanding medicines and, 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 and the cures for things. So um, we, we, there's, we, we, we've created a few problems here, so we need the uh, we need young minds to be as passionate and involved in science to help us understand how it all really works and our place in it. So we're very happy about that. This film provides a very interesting uh, historical perspective on the development of the theory of evolution, in particular natural selection. So a lot of people ask the question, why are there so many different species and why do so many plants and animals look different? Bates was very interesting and insightful in asking the question, why do so many things actually look the same? So a lot of butterflies look the same, a lot of plants look the same, um, a lot of birds and lizards, frogs. Uh, you see these different patterns emerging over and over and over again throughout the history of life. And Bates was one of the first people to really crystallize this question, why do things look the same? And we know now, uh, thanks to his work, that a lot of this has to do, especially in butterflies, because of mimicry. So a lot of animals are under similar selective pressures uh, to evolve to look the same, right? So in the case of butterflies, uh, like the ones that Bates worked on, we know that uh, it's important for them to all look similar so birds don't eat them because they're toxic. So this is a very important chapter in the history of evolutionary thought. The most memorable part of the job for the film was really, uh, you know, being out in the rainforest with a crew of 125 people and all passionately committed to the same objective. And that was really, really interesting because when you make uh, a lot of feature film or television shows, you, you know, for many people it's kind of a job. And it really felt very special for people because they understood that we were telling a true story, that we were passionately committed to getting it right. And that kind of infected the whole crew. So it isn't so much a moment, it's the feeling that I remember that is so memorable uh, of, of having a whole crew of people all dedicated to the same purpose and all feeling powerfully good about it. Some of the challenges we faced in making the film were really the fact that we were in the Amazon and it's uh, hot and humid, very long days. Uh, we have to travel long distances sometimes. Um, but you know what we kept reminding ourselves was if we were you know 10 hours into a long day and sweating and feeling you know really exhausted, we would think back to Henry Bates and what was it like for him 160 years ago? He didn't have a power boat. He didn't have uh, a telephone. He didn't have a little battery operated fan that he could hold up against his face and cool himself down. He didn't have some someone bringing a plate of mangoes over to cool them off. I mean, we had uh, a lot of conveniences that, that Henry Bates and, and Wallace and all these great uh, biologists and explorers 
they didn't have those things. And so we were actually pretty lucky. This was a great film crew to work with. Uh, the whole production staff was very, very keen to get all of the details correct, which was very refreshing. They didn't want to cut any corners. They wanted to make sure they had um, all of the science right. Well, and I'm now just trying to make sure we put the right drawings and specimens onto the desk. So it was a delight for me and the other scientific advisors to work with this crew uh, because they really cared. They cared about Bates, uh, they cared about the uh, theories and the ideas they're trying to communicate, and they also cared about making a really good movie with a really strong narrative. Uh, in my opinion, a lot of IMAX movies, they look great, but maybe the, the substance or the story um, can leave a, a little bit to be desired. I think here they really tried to pack a lot of uh, important uh, details, information and ideas uh, into a very compelling narrative. Um, and it looked great too. So it was, it was a lot of fun working on this movie. In the making of the film, we used the newest, highest resolution uh, cameras and uh, for, for aerial shots, drones, to be able to capture the images in the highest possible resolution so that they would be uh, able to be shown in these in these IMAX and other giant screen theaters. One of the things that we have found works really well on these giant screen IMAX films is what's called macro photography. So basically you you take a tiny creature and you fill the whole screen with it. And it just is a whole other perspective on the world around us to see things that big and that close. And it really allows people to sort of enter another headspace and another world, and yet it's real. That you're really looking at that real critter that close up with that much detail. It's really cool. People love it. So one of the real treats of this movie was seeing some incredibly rare insects and animals um, on an IMAX screen. So for instance, the scene with the uh, caterpillar that looks like a snake. I mean, almost nobody gets to see that. That's a pretty rare insect. And they're able to actually get one of those and film it in IMAX for the whole world to see. Or the spider that looks like a flower. I've never seen that myself. And I, I've worked in the Amazon. I, I know people that have worked, worked there for decades and haven't seen a lot of these animals. So it was an incredible treat to be able to see these movies on a big screen. And in large part, that's thanks. Uh, you can give thanks to the, uh, the, the scientific advisors that they actually had in the field, including some very talented Brazilian scientists. There are a lot of technologies now in terms of both cameras and lenses, which really allow you to get that close. And even out in the field, which is really interesting. When we made a film years ago called Bugs, we had an incredibly elaborate technology uh, to be able to capture the insects really close up macro. Now uh, the, the cameras have just and the lenses have just gotten so much more sophisticated that it's, it's hard but it's not nearly as hard as it used to be. We actually filmed all of this, uh, all of the Amazon animal shots with high resolution digital cameras and we were mostly on either you know on tripods uh, but we didn't have uh, we didn't have elaborate um, slings or other kind of gear that some uh, some teams use. We didn't need to. We were able to capture it right in the field. In terms of the sound, uh, we did a lot of on-location sound recording. So the way it works when you're making a film like this, if we were shooting a scene that involved, say, an actor, um, we would shoot the scene and then when everybody was gone, and there was nobody there and no set there anymore, we would, f we would actually record the sound of that location, which gives you a sort of bass sound which makes it very real. Uh, so we would blend the sound of the, sound of the, of, of the dialogue that was on location uh, and the, the sound while we were filming, and then when no one was there, film that lo it, sorry, take sound recordings of that location so that we could make it really rich, the, the sound really rich. This was a big team operation to make this film. First and foremost, we had funders in the four major foundations, particularly the National Science Foundation and particularly the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, who provided funding. But they didn't just provide funding, they provided advice, uh, support, consultation all the way along the way. The Moore Foundation, the Simons Foundation provided funding. And then we had a team of, you know, we had two main writers, Wendy and her co-writer Carl Knudsen, who spent several years 
working full on. We had a research team that Wendy managed, uh, a team of researchers digging up information and clarifying information uh, so that we could document everything we were saying. We had uh, some of the most extraordinary cinematographers and camera crew. We had a cinematographer just for the drama and a cinematographer for all the natural history, world-leading cinematographers. We had a great director, Mike Slee, with whom we made Flight of the Butterflies and another film called Bugs. So we have a long history of collaborating with them. It was really, an, and we have, of course, a great Canadian editor, Carolyn Christie, and uh, just a fantastic crew here, post-production crew with Deluxe in Toronto. So huge numbers of people, hundreds and hundreds of people involved in making this as a team. One of the things that was very important in this film was to be historically accurate, both scientifically accurate and historically accurate. Uh, we, these films go to museums and in the museum environment, there are curators and scientists and historians uh, who, who have passed judgment on these films and ha we have to make them accurate. And we really thought that the, one of the best ways to inspire people was by telling a true story and telling it truthfully. And that was a real challenge. We had to do a lot of research. Uh, my partner, the writer, the co-writer, Wendy McKeegan, she did a huge, led a huge research campaign to unearth uh, even new facts about Bates. Uh, but we followed the historical trajectory very, very closely and as accurately as we possibly could with the available information. So it's very important for scientists like me to have filmmakers like this and writers and science communicators to get our discoveries and I ideas out to the public. So it's, it's my job to do the most awesome, incredible science I can. Uh, but I, I don't have the skills or maybe the time to be able to communicate my findings to the public um, as well as SK Films or uh, other similar um, companies would do. So it's really great when they reach out to people like me to get my input and insight uh, when they're developing these uh, different forms of outreach um, to try to get discoveries of people like me, people like Bates and many others out to the public. We really feel like these films you know, have an impact regardless of your age. I mean, we, we were particularly uh, excited about inspiring young people, but we have so many people of all ages who respond, you know, they're looking for something uh, that is, uh, you know, entertaining, but also goes a little bit beyond entertainment and makes them learn something without shoving it down their throat and in a sort of positive way where, and in a kind of inspiring way. And that's why we keep doing this. I can guarantee you will be entertained by this film. You'll be inspired uh, by it, including both the adventure story and the remarkable scientific discovery. And I just think people should know about it. And I think that uh, it'll give them a lot of insight into how, um, how science works, how natural selection works, the most biodiverse place on the world, um, the Amazon rainforest. And to even understand that biodiversity and to understand that what happens in the rainforest forest affects us all and uh, it affects the world's um, hydrologic cycle and even that understanding that the film inspires kids to learn more I think that the students who've seen it and the audiences we get letters back and they have been inspired they want to learn more and that's really really important so I hope you want to join uh, us in and, and share the passion for this film I think you're going to be very happy you should definitely come see this movie. It's one of the best IMAX movies I've seen. It's a great story of adventure and discovery and curiosity, and hard work. Uh, there's a lot of uh, very interesting scientific insight that you can gain from it, but it's also just beautiful too. The music is great, the scenery is great, uh, there's incredible animals to see, so it's a real delight. Would love to have you come and see this film. It's a, it's a film made out of passion and we think it appeals to all ages and all kinds of people and so please come and see it.